Do you need to show the path that a player can take to get to a specific objective? Are you not using the navigation system because you have a third person controller or a first person controller? The navigation system can still help you do that and we're gonna take a look at how in this video. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality. Here in part 31 of the AI series, we're doing things a little bit differently because we're actually not going to use a nav mesh agent, but we are still talking about the navigation system. We're going to take a player and show them via the nav mesh how to move from where they are to some target location. And the concept of this is very simple. We're going to just take the player's current location, calculate a path on the nav mesh from where they are to that target location, and then using the line render, we're going to link all those positions together and show them the path. We'll have this configurable so we can configure how tall above the ground that this line render should be and how frequently we should update it and recalculate the path. To make this a little bit more interesting, we'll have a script that will spawn collectible objects around the level and will direct the player towards wherever those are. Hey, and just really quick, I wanna give a shout out to my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate it. Every bit helps the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people, and that means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you wanna help me in that cause, you can show your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash academy. You can get your name up on the screen. You can get a voice shout out, start at the silver tier and some other cool perks. Special shout outs to Raphael and Andrew Bowen for being the silver tier supporters. I am so grateful. Thank you. In this scene, I've imported the Unity standard assets. That's where I got this third person controller, the terrain materials, and the grass. I've constructed this glowing ring that will have spin around and our objective will be to run through it to pick it up. And of course, we'll have that line drawing from our player that is not on a nav mesh to the glowing circle that spawned. To do that, I'll create two scripts, a collectible and a collectible spawner. We'll start with the collectible spawner. I'll add a private serialized field collectible called the prefab, a private serialized transform player, a private line renderer, also serialized path, a private float path height offset set to the 1.25 by default, a private float spawn height offset set to 1.5 by default, a private float path update speed, set that to be 0.25 by default, and we'll have all of those serialized. Then I'll create a private collectible active instance and a private nav mesh triangulation, triangulation, and one final one, a private coroutine draw path coroutine. What this class is going to do is spawn a prefab, the collectible, after the players made contact with that collectible. It will draw a path via the line renderer between the player and the spawned collectible instance, and we're gonna use the path height offset to adjust how high in the world our path should be because we have this grass, right? We don't want it to be necessarily under the grass. We want it to be visible to the player. We have the spawn height offset. So the spawned collectible will move up because it should be a floating ring. It shouldn't be like halfway in the ground, right? And the path update speed would be the delay before recalculating the path that we're going to display on that line renderer. On awake, we're going to calculate the nav mesh triangulation. If you have a dynamic nav mesh, you'll have to recalculate this triangulation every time that you update the nav mesh. But since we're keeping a static nav mesh in this demo, we can do it on awake. On start, I'll call spawn new object. And then let's define that as a private void spawn new object. We'll set active instance to equal instantiate the prefab. And then for the position, we're going to do triangulation.vertices, random.range, zero to triangulation.vertices.link, and then adding in the vector three dot up times a spawn height offset. So we're choosing a random vertice on the nav mesh through the triangulation, and we're just going to spawn this prefab at that location. I'm going to pass in a quaternion.euler, making it be a 90 degree rotated on the X axis, because that's how my prefab is oriented. In your game, you may consider using an object pool for this instead. For this demo, let's just keep it easy and do it with instantiating a prefab every time. Once we have a new active instance, we're going to check if the draw path coroutine is not null. We'll stop it if it is not null, and then we'll assign a new draw path coroutine to be start coroutine draw path to collectible. Let's go ahead and define that coroutine function now with a private i enumerator draw path to collectible. We'll define a wait for seconds wait to be a new wait for seconds based on that path update speed. And we'll also define a nav mesh path path 
to be a new nav mesh path. And we're using lowercase path here because we have the uppercase path that's the line renderer. We'll check while active instance is not null, we will check if nav mesh dot calculate path from the player position to the active instance dot transform dot position sampling on nav mesh dot all areas and passing in the nav mesh path as the final parameter. The nav mesh path is a path as calculated by the navigation system under the hood setting the destination of the nav mesh agent to a particular location basically calls this function and calculates this nav mesh path. Since we're not using a nav mesh agent to set the destination, but we still want to calculate a path, this is the perfect function for us to use here. The key thing in there is that it has an array of corners, which are vector three locations in world space. And what we'll end up doing is just drawing a line render across each of those corners. And that'll tell us how to get to our target. If this returns true, it successfully calculated that path. We'll then do path.position count equals path lowercase dot corners dot length. So that way we know we have the correct number of positions on our line render. And we'll say for int i equals zero, i less than lowercase path dot corners dot length i plus plus. We'll then use the line render, the uppercase path dot set position, passing in i, and then we will use path dot corners indexed by i plus vector three up times the path height offset. We're first setting the path position count to be the same length as the number of corners on our nav mesh calculated path. Then we're setting each of those positions to be the exact same as the path that we calculated, but we're offsetting it up by the path height offset. We'll then add an else block to say if the nav mesh calculate path failed to calculate, that means that either our agent or our instance is too far away from the nav mesh for us to calculate a path. So we'll just log an error saying that we're unable to calculate that path. And that'll be more for us to understand that maybe we need to do some invisible wall placing, or maybe it's fine, we can just leave it alone. Or maybe we're spawning a collectible somewhere that the player cannot get to based on where we've put our nav mesh. And of course, because this is a coroutine, we'll yield return await at the end of this while loop, and then we'll hop over to the collectible class. In this class, we'll define a private vector three spin amount, serialize that and set it to be a new vector three zero twenty zero by default. We're going to spin on the positive y axis by 20 units every update. I'll also define a public collectible spawner spawner and we'll assign that in a little bit. On update, we'll do transform.rotation equals quaternion.euler passing in the transform rotation Euler angles plus the spin amount times time dot delta time. So we'll spin at a frame rate independent rate. Then we'll define the magic unity function private void on trigger enter that accepts a collider other that's triggered whenever a rigid body enters our trigger collider. And we will destroy this game object and call spawner dot spawn new object. But you'll remember that in the collectible spawner, we define that as a private function. That's why we have this red squiggly line. And we still haven't assigned the spawner. So let's hop back over to the collectible spawner. We'll rescope spawn new object to be public. And whenever we spawn this collectible from instantiating it from the prefab, we'll assign active instance dot spawner equals this. If we hop back to the Unity editor, you can see that we have this line renderer already configured. It's just a line renderer with a line renderer component on it. I've configured it to have 12 corner vertices and 12 end cap vertices just to get a little bit of rounding. It doesn't really matter if that's there or not. And on the materials, you can see I have this path material configured. It's kind of a blue glowing emissive line that has a little bit of fading on the sides and that's all it is. If I open up the glowing ring prefab in here, I will attach that collectible script. We don't really need to do anything to the collectible script, but we do need to change the layer it's on because we want it to only do something whenever a player enters it, not if it accidentally interacts with the world. So at the top where there's the layer, I will click add new layer. And I'm actually going to add two layers here. I'm going to add a collectible and a player layer, and we'll assign this to be on the collectible layer. We'll assign the player to be on the player layer. I'll then create a new empty game object, call it collectible spawner and attach the collectible spawner script to it. I'll drag the glowing ring to the prefab. I'll drag the player to the player and I'll drag the line renderer to the path. We have all that hooked up, but there's one more thing we need to do. We need to adjust the physics layers so the collectible only collides with the player. So in the project settings, physics, we'll come in here and deselect everything on the collectibles column except for the player. That should be good, so we'll click play. And we'll see there's a glowing line coming out of the player's neck going towards this glowing ring. If I select the line renderer, we can see that there are three indices here, zero being at the player, one being around this pointy thing coming out of the terrain, and the last one is actually at the glowing ring. If I move around, you can see that the position of the line updates as my player moves. In this new position, we have a total of five positions of the line, but you can see that it's kind of jerky as I move, and that's because we have it set at the 0.25 second delay. If we go ahead and jump forward a little bit, I'll update the path update speed to be 0.0 0167, so it's about 60 times per second. And once I collect this glowing ring, 
Since we start a new coroutine, we'll see that it'll update much faster and it's much more smooth. It looks a little bit weird coming out of my head, so we'll adjust the path height offset to be something we can set it all the way down on the ground or even above me. Maybe somewhere around one makes more sense. And as I run around, we'll see that it updates pretty smooth all the way up to where I collect the next glowing ring. But wait, there's more. You can make this work also with a nav mesh agent. So what I've done is attached a nav mesh agent to the third person controller and disabled the third person movement script. In the draw path to collectible coroutine, I've also set the agent's path to be the path that we calculated with navmesh.calculate path. We don't need to use set destination and calculate a new path because we already know the path we want the agent to take. And if I hop over to this scene view, you can see that the red line underneath this glowing line is the path that the agent is actually trying to take. And it lines up really well with this glowing line visualization that we have. It's a little bit hard to see. I know this kind of blue thing is really challenging to see all the other controls with. But if you look really closely, it's there. This is a really cool debug visualization you can use for yourself. Or you can actually show your players the path that an app mesh agent or that they should take to get to a specific objective. If you've been getting value out of this video or the series, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. This new video is posted every Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.